that maybe are joining us online for the first time or here in the building and haven't been around a while, we are expecting, this is not a surgical problem, it's a child. So March, beginning of March, um, it is a boy, which we're very excited about. We have two little girls. We don't have a name. So if you're sitting here today and the Lord prophetically speaks something to your spirit, feel free, share that. Share the Isaiah, okay, okay. We're, we'll take it, we'll take, we're, we're struggling. Maybe Matt's not struggling, I'm, I'm struggling. Um, so we have, we mentioned this, you know, we're in a series, this is the last week of our series called Pursuit. Pastor Brandon had two weeks, two messages before this, and um, just incredible messages, so if you haven't had a chance, go back and listen. Oh, I was gonna say this as my disclaimer statement. I always have to give disclaimer statements. Three things that always follow me with every pregnancy, tired, shortness of breath, and pregnancy brain. It's a real thing, it's scientific, you can look it up. So if I say something crazy today, guys, just look at your neighbor and go, it's pregnancy brain, it's fine. And we're all just gonna move on. Does that sound good? Fantastic. I talked about Angel Tree last weekend. It went so fast and was out of breath and about passed out. So I'm going to do better than that this weekend. But there are still angels available if you want to pick some up. We also added some virtual options so you guys can just sponsor a child online. So check those out in the lobby. Um, so we're just going to breathe and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be good. Um, but we had formally done a, a series on following Jesus and following God, and, and Pastor Brandon really felt like the Lord was telling him it's not just about following really closely, but actively pursuing the heart of God. That um, it, we're in this too, right? That there's roles that we can play too. And so I'm going to talk a little bit this morning about, in addition to the weeks that we've already covered, what are some ways, I just love practicality, so we're going to talk a lot of practical things today, but what are some ways that we can pursue the heart of God? What can that look like? And I feel like there's probably three groups of people in the room today or joining online, and the first group, y'all could probably teach this. You guys could probably stand up here and talk and teach through a lot what I'm talking about. So to that group, I want to encourage you two things. One, as Americans, we have a lot of access to a lot of things, and part of that is a lot about learning about Jesus, but we don't often do as much as we know. And so if you're part of that group where you could probably teach this, let today listen with those ears. Ask the Holy Spirit, like, is there things that I know that I'm not doing? Okay, so that's the first thing. If you're part of that first group, you could probably teach this. I hope you are teaching this to people. One of the things that Matt, on our journey of um, that our youth pastor used to always say to us is, you know, think of your relationship as a mountain of God and you're climbing the mountain of God and you want somebody ahead of you that's able to show you and teach and share with you what they've learned, but you want somebody behind you that you're able to pass on what you've learned. So if you're part of this first group, find those people that you can be passing this on to and be listening today with those ears of, do I know how to explain this? Do I know how to share this? Do I know how to teach somebody? And if you're not, I ask that the Holy Spirit would bring that person into your path would illuminate that person to you. Get in a group, find somebody in a group. Maybe it's somebody at your workplace, but we want to be teachers of these things and not just hold on to these things. So if you feel like you can teach all these things today, do it. Find somebody, teach somebody, share it, do it. Second group, you're probably, um, sometimes when we start coming into church, things feel real foreign. Like the language feels a little foreign, maybe what's happening, or, you know, I have a really good friend who's actually a pastor now, but gave his life to the Lord when he was like 17 or 18, and I remember him always talking about, he came into church and was like, why are we raising our hands? And why are we singing about animals, right? right? Like, lion and the lamb, we're all like, and he's like, I don't, you know, and then learned, and it was awesome, and he understands now, but sometimes the language that we can use can feel so foreign. And so if you're in that group today, I just wanna say thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in online, and know that by you being here, by you, caring and desiring, that is part of the pursuit. You are in pursuit of the heart of God like we've been talking about. So don't count yourself out, but hopefully this morning will be helpful to you. And group two, you're probably a mix in the middle, right? Like, and so glad you're here and you guys, same thing. You don't have to be an expert before you can share what you know, or what you've experienced about God, but listen into, hopefully this will be helpful for you. So definition of pursuit. To find or employ measures to obtain or accomplish, to engage in.
to find or employ measures to obtain or accomplish or to engage in. So what can that practically look like? What we're gonna talk about today. Few things, though, before we jump into that that I wanna say. First thing, a, an important truth that I think we have to understand and know that we know that we know before we talk about some practical things of how to do this. You are being pursued. We need to first and foremost understand this pursuit business is not all on us. It's not all on our shoulders. God has first pursued you. Um, and so this is simply us turning towards him when he's already pursuing us. This is simply us being the other half of a relationship, pursuing the other person back, being Jesus. So God is in pursuit of you. Number two, important truth we need to understand before we talk about this. Methods of how to pursue God are simply tools. I love Dana's story of her being able to be like, I used to be a perfectionist, but now I'm perfected in the love of Christ. We can do all these free things, right? We can worship, we can do all these things. But if we're creating a religious tech list by I did this, I did this, I did this, and I did this, and we feel like it's on us to get in good graces with the Heavenly Father, we have missed the point. So the things that we're talking about are not to make a religious checklist so you feel good. I'm a good Christian. I'm doing good things. They are tools to help us connect with a very real God that wants real relationship with us. Okay. I love to. We'll hit it really fast. Proverbs 24, 16. Pastor Brandon hit on this, so I was going to cover it a little bit, but you guys can go back and listen to the messages. But he talked about just the, it's, it has to be the condition and desire and direction of our heart. And Proverbs 24, 16 talks about, though a righteous man falls seven times, they rise again. So again, it's not this perfection business. It's about relying on and growing in and growing closer and pursuing Jesus in that relationship. It's not about religious checklist. So how, what are some ways we're gonna talk about today, some additional ways to what we've already talked about of how do we pursue God? What can that look like? Because sometimes I think, you know, we even in pre-service prayer this morning had a verse up there, you know, when you pursue God with your whole heart, he'll be found. And I'm just picturing, like, if we don't understand, we're like, Ooh, I'm pursuing Jesus, I'm pursuing Jesus, right? Like, what does that look like? Like, how can we actually do that? So here's some things along with what we've already talked about. One way that we can pursue Jesus, pursue relationship with him is with worship. And congratulations, y'all already participated in a form of that this morning, right? A form of worship is singing, is song, is what we experience collectively this morning as part of the local body. Um, and music's powerful, y'all. It's powerful, and God knew that. You know, he actually commands us to use music to worship him. Ephesians talks about that. It talks about um, speak to each other with songs and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. There is power in music, so think about that, because that goes both ways, right? Just free. We're not going there today, but that's free. But there's power in that, and so that's one of the ways that we get to worship God because he's deserving of it. The second reason we do it, we can pursue God through, through worship, through song, through singing to him, is because he tells us to. It's an act of obedience. We find in Psalm 100, he's telling us, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. We have a creator, we have a designer, and he is worthy of worship. But here's the thing that our designer knew. We best function, right? How do you know how something functions? You ask the designer. We best function when our attention is not on ourselves, when our attention is on him. So if we want to pursue Jesus, making that part of our lives, whether it's collective worship times, private worship times, with yourself, at your home, in your car, but we worship God because he tells us to because he knows we best operate when we're not focused on us and we're not focused on our surroundings and our situations. We pursue God through worship with how we live, right? So some of us that don't enjoy singing or don't have great voices say amen to this one, right? We pursue God through who, how we, sorry, we pursue God through worship with how we live. Romans 12.1 in the Amplified Version. Present your bodies dedicated at all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God. And I love this. It's your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. So taking all of yourself and presenting it before God as a living sacrifice. Because once we give our lives to Jesus, we're dead to who we were. And we're figuring out how to live as this new creation that he's made us. So as a living sacrifice, 
living well-pleasing to him is an act of worship. I love the message version. It just kind of like a paraphrased version. Um, but it says this. Here's what I want you to do. Same verse. God helping you, right? Because we don't do it in our own strength. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, your going to work, your walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. I love the way that they phrase that. Your everyday, ordinary life, placing it before God. So we pursue God through worship, through song, with music. We give him glory, and that can even just be just your words, because he deserves it, because that's how we best function when our eyes are focused on him. And we pursue God with worship through how we live. Two, we pursue God with prayer. So we pursue God with worship. We pursue God with prayer. Prayer in its simplest form is talking to God like you would a friend. And God is omniscient. He knows everything. But here's the thing. If you've been around a baby, you've raised a baby, right, and they get to be about toddler age or kid age, you know what they're going to do. You know what their choices are probably going to be. You know. But how amazing is it when they talk to you about their little lives? How much do you delight when they're like, oh, let me tell you, da da you I knew you were going to do that. But, you know, it's still awesome to be able to hear from them. Our Heavenly Father is the same way. He's not wanting you to talk to him about your life because he doesn't know. He's wanting you to talk to him about your life because he loves you and he wants to be involved in it. He wants you to let him be involved in it, and he delights in you. So prayer, we pursue God. We grow in our connection to God through just talking to him. First Thessalonians 5.16 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. Pray without ceasing. This does not mean you are at your grocery store, you are at your job, you are at wherever you are, and you're like, dear Jesus, thank you. Hi, how are you? This is a great day. Thank you so much. Praying without ceasing means you're just having conversation with God throughout the day, that it's not limited to your quiet time in the morning where you read the Bible or at night. It is a conversation. It's ongoing. I actually looked up this verse, and it's interesting to kind of, there's a lot of tools online. I like BibleHub.com. You can kind of look into like the original language and then a further definition of what the original language means. And this, without ceasing, they described it this way. Um, word, and it means regularly, yet intermittent. So regularly, but yet intermittent. And then they compared it to this. They said, it's like, oh man, I lost it. Oh, it's like a persistent cough. Is that not perfect? Like, it's just something you're instinctually doing, right? Like, you wake up in the morning, you're like, God, thank you for the day. You're in your car. You're like, I don't like the snow, but thank you that I have a car. You know, like, you're just in conversation throughout the day. It's like a persistent cough. It's just part of what you're having to do in the moment because it's part of what you're at, part of what you're dealing with. So it's this pray without ceasing. And again, it's this continual inviting God into the ordinary moments of our lives. So we pursue God through worship. We pursue God through prayer. We pursue God through community. And congratulations, you guys are also doing a form of this this morning, being in church, being in church community. But we do encourage you. Sunday mornings are really hard to, like, really get to know somebody. You're kind of doing, like, the Sunday morning, hi, how are you? Great, hi, how are you? And then we all leave and go get lunch. So we really encourage you to you know, meet some people, get deeper relationships. Um, we have banner groups that we love. You can find those online. You get really great relationships there. Even doing classes or just doing, jumping in in different ways to pursue greater relationships, just the hi, how are you, church acquaintance relationships. Um, you know, and I was thinking, I have a few things that I wrote down, but I didn't write this down, but I was thinking about it last night of, you know, my other points are a little more serious, but I really hope as believers of Christ, we are joyful people. I didn't know we were going to sing the song this morning, but the first song we sung talked about the joy of the Lord is our strength. We should really be some of the funnest people to be around. We should, I'm not as fun, but I married somebody fun, so it's helping me learn to be more fun. But we really should be joyful people. And so find some people that are loving Jesus, get around them, and let that joy be life-giving to you. I love the ladies, I call them my front row cheerleaders. I don't, just because they, they're supportive and they're energetic and they're fun. But I've gotten over the years to know some of their stories. They don't exude joy because life has been easy. 
They've all gone through really hard things. Some of them are still walking through hard things. They exude joy because they understand this pursuit of Jesus and that joy is not contingent on happenings, like happiness is something that's deeper, it's something that's fuller. So hopefully you have some of those people in your life that help you do that, that help you go through hard things and, and, and find this joy, and we should, be, we should be having fun, we should be laughing, and, and serious when you need to, but, okay, I'm moving on, that's not in my notes. Um, but what I did write down is, okay, we are not saying, sometimes I think we say this and it gets a little confusing, we're not saying when you give your life to Jesus, you cut everybody out of your life that doesn't know the Lord. That's actually not a very healthy thing to do anyway. When we get around and we're in, what's it called, like an echo chamber, and you're only ever hearing the same opinion as their own, that's not really a great place, healthy place to be anyway. So that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is pursue community so that the closest people around you, the ones that know you, the ones that know the details of your life, the ones that will give you advice and you'll listen, Right? Let those closest people around you be people that are also pursuing Jesus. There's a verse in James 5.16, and it talks about confessing your sins one to another, praying for each other so that you may be healed. So this idea of having people that you are close enough with, that you are comfortable enough with, then when whether, you know, we think confessing your sin, it's like this major thing. That may be real. There may be a season where you go, dang it. And you have something you need to talk about. But it could also be going to each other and just needing prayer or needing support or having struggle or something's going hard in life. But being able to go to somebody that knows you well, that that relationship's already developed, it already exists. Because there's something different about going to a stranger for prayer than there is about somebody who's really going to be praying for you because they know you and they love you and they're fighting for you. Does that make sense? So develop those relationships. Let those closest people around you be people that would do that. And the Bible not only says to do it, but it says that there's healing in it. Sometimes things are heavy and they're full of maybe shame or insecurity or fear. And as we can confess those things, as we can speak those things, there's a healing that God does in our lives to save people that we have a relationship with. Another thing that I feel like community is so important in our pursuit of God is there's so many times I've watched people and they are, a curveball comes, life happens, Hard stuff happens. Following Jesus gets us out of a lot of those things because we know a way to live that's kingdom living that hopefully gets us out of trouble and not into trouble most of the time, but we still live in a fallen world. And so hard stuff still comes. And who is in your ear giving you advice in those moments is huge. And here's the thing I want us to understand. Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Message virgin, love message paraphrase. Become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. Now here's something I want to clarify. I do not think any responsible, mature adult in this room has like, let me surround myself with fools. I want to find the friends that are the dum-dums, right? Like nobody's doing that. But here's something I want us to understand. Let's dive a little deeper into that. When the word of God talks about fools, it's not thinking like maybe what we would think. In 1 Corinthians, it talks about the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It's foolishness to those that don't know Jesus. And it goes on and talks about the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. So you want to surround yourselves with people that to the best of their ability are in pursuit of relationship with God that gives them true wisdom that they then in turn can speak into your life in those moments. Because the wisdom of God is not the same as our inherent fleshly wisdom even. Even as Christians, it's different. And so somebody who doesn't understand the cross and doesn't understand what our whole life is pivoting around, which is Jesus, isn't going to have this to give to you in the moments where we desperate. We need it all the time. But there's moments that it is crucial to what we are deciding or the season of life that we are in. By simply placing yourself around people, cultivating, investing in relationships of people who are also trying to pursue Jesus the best that they can. It will encourage you, it will inspire you, it will motivate you, and it potentially will change your life. We pursue Jesus through worship, we pursue Jesus through prayer, we pursue Jesus through the community and the friendships that we make, those closest to us. Four, we pursue God through reading the Bible. 
Pastor Brandon talked about this last week. Go back and listen to it if you didn't get a chance. Um, God's word is how we know who God is. We know his character. We know how he communicates, how he talks, which is how we learn to hear and know if we're hearing his voice by being able to compare it to this. It's how we figure out the best way to live. It's, we sang this in a song today too. It's how we bring kingdom living to earth. When we give our lives to Jesus, we're not just here just to help other people know him. That's part of it. But we're actually supposed to bring kingdom living to earth. And we can learn how to do that because it's not, again, something that's normal to us in here. Um, you know, you hear people say a lot things like, God told me. Or I heard God say, and you know how you learn to do that? Is you learn this. And then as the more you know this, as you feel like, like some of us hear audible things. I've probably heard like, uh, like not audible, but like a voice speak to me like five times. And they've been, they've been silly. Like once I was in elementary school and it was like, your bird's gonna be dead when you get home. It was. It's like, thank you Holy Spirit for the heads up. Not really very climactic moment to hear your voice, but okay. The other time it was like, there's a flea, go check, not a flea, a tick. There's a tick in your hair. And there was, got rid of it, I don't know. So right, like those are two of my five. But other times, mainly what it's been for me, is able to, there's a thought that comes into my head and I go, I don't think that was me. And it actually lines up with how my heavenly father operates, so I think it was him. Or there's a feeling or like a sense in your gut. And everybody's a little different. Matt's like, I get warm all over. And I'm like, I don't get warm anywhere, but I just <laughs> try and know. You know, so everybody's a little different. But you know how you learn to hear the Holy Spirit's voice and what God is talking to you is by being able to compare it to this and know the word of God. Otherwise, y'all, we end up doing crazy things. We've seen that play out. Things done in the name of God that do not line up with this. This is how we know the voice of God. Okay, what am I doing on time? Okay, we're running, we're good, we're good. We're still breathing, we're still going. Okay, I wanna spend a few minutes really quick. I actually got the verbal award this morning of most slides ever in the time that our current production leader has been here, and you're about to see why. So. The God's word is full of what happens when we get into reading and learning about his word. And we're literally going to fly through these. And I'm not even going to read the whole verse. But I want you to get just a picture of what we're going to see now when we don't put the effort in to learn. And it's effort. It's different, right? Like some of us aren't readers. I get it. It's effort. But I want to hear some of the things that God says that happens as we encounter and we engage in his word and read his word and learn his word. Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is living and active. It's not a dead old storybook. It is living, it is active. It can discern thoughts and intentions of the heart. I don't know about you all, but I need help with that. What is going on? Why am I thinking? What is happening? It can discern the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Psalm 119, it's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How many ever need direction? And know what way to go or how to do it. Psalm 19, 11, I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. If following Jesus, you feel like you just continue to fall and fall and fall, keep putting this in your heart. It'll help you eventually not do that as often. Psalm 119, 9, how can a man keep his way pure? Again, guarding it according to your word. Second Timothy, this is useful for teaching. It's useful for correction, for training. We need that. We want to grow. Like Matt was talking about, we want to be better. Was that in pre-service? Oh, sorry. Come to pre-service. There's apparently a whole lot of stuff that I'm talking about from pre-service prayer and worship that wasn't actually said in the service. Um, Mark 13. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. You can stand on this. It surpasses time. Heaven and earth will pass away, and this will not pass away. A shield to those who take refuge in him. I don't know how many times you all need a shield or a place of refuge. Romans 15, 4, that we might have hope. This provides instruction and encouragement of the scriptures so we might have hope. Y'all, we live in a world that needs hope. Proverbs 4, 20, they are life. God's word is life to those who find them. It is healing to their flesh. It's crazy getting the word. I promise you'll find life in it. 
If you're in a situation or somebody you love is in a situation that needs healing, begin speaking and praying scripture over their life. It is healing to our flesh. Proverbs 3 actually says that being in the word and putting them in your heart and obeying the commands of God actually will prolong your life by years. When we don't prioritize and figure out how to read this and understand this, we miss out on so much that God has for us. And again, we're not doing it for a check mark, right? Like we're not doing it for a religious checklist, but we're doing it for connection to Jesus. I love John 14, 26, talks about we have a heavenly father, we have a savior who died for our sins so we can have connection with our heavenly father, and we also have a Holy Spirit, God three in one. Same way water, H2O, has different ways, right? It's steam, it's, it's water, it's ice, it's different things, but it's the same things. Same with the Trinity of God, Heavenly Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Part of what the Holy Spirit does is it says it brings, the Holy Spirit brings things back to our memory. So you may do ordinary life, right? That's what the message version talked about. You may be living your ordinary life, reading this word, trying to understand it. It's nothing that's revolutionizing, doesn't feel mind-blowing. You are putting that stuff in your mind and your heart. And the Holy Spirit then, part of the Holy Spirit's job is to bring that back to your remembrance when you need it. He can't pull it if it's not there. So the ordinary moments, they matter. They're important. And here's the thing with the Word of God, and some of you may know this again. Hope you're able to teach this. Hope this was helpful for you. Um, not necessarily something you want to try and read from beginning to end. That's a little confusing. You can start, if, if, you, if you need a place to start, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, there's four different books. They talk about Jesus. Great place to start reading because you can learn about Jesus. Also back, a little plug for community again, right? Like if you have people in your circle that are loving Jesus and are a little further ahead than you, you can take this and you can ask your questions. And they'll share what they know, or they'll say, I don't know, and we, guys, we can figure it out together. But it doesn't have to be confusing if, if you have people to do this with, if you can do it in community. We also have here at the Welcome Center, we have, we call them SOAP cards. It's an acronym. It has nothing to do with SOAP. But it's scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So it's like this idea, of, and the whole church kind of does it together, of like a passage of scripture that you read. What do you observe? What is God saying? How do we apply that? And then we pray. And again, it's a method, but it's a method to help us get into this because there's power in this and there's connection with God in this and it's part of how we pursue our relationship with the Lord. So we can pursue the relationship with the Lord through our worship, whether that's community, whether that's individual, with our lifestyle. We pursue our relationship with Jesus through prayer, just talking to him. Pursue our relationship through community. And we pursue relationship through reading and knowing his word. And I just wanna take a moment today as we begin to close. You know, the first place all this starts, because I said earlier that we are being pursued this is not all on our shoulders to do. We are being pursued by a God that loves us and wants relationship with us and is trying to get every hurdle out of our way to have relationship with us. So if you find yourself in here this morning and you haven't began that relationship or maybe you've walked away from it a bit or if you're watching online and that's where you find yourself, I wanna end this morning just by giving opportunity we're going to pray in a moment and giving you opportunity to begin or begin again that relationship. It's so worthwhile, friends. It's so worth the investment and so worth your time. And again, it's not a promise, right? We live in a world that has sin and that's fallen away from the perfect creation that God meant it to be. So it's not a promise that everything's going to forever go right in your life, but it is a whole different ball game to walk through hard things knowing Jesus, having the Holy Spirit, having the comforter, having the teacher, having the guide, whole different ball game. So if y'all would close your eyes with me this morning, everybody in here, 
And if you find yourself in a spot where you haven't started your relationship with Jesus, or maybe you've walked away from it and you want to come back, we're all going to say a prayer together. We're going to repeat after me, but I want you to mean this from your heart. The Bible tells us that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, that we will be saved. It's the beginning of a relationship. The Bible says that it actually makes us a new creation. Old things are gone and new things have come and you begin to step in and figure out what is that? Who am I as a new creation? What is it to know Jesus? What is it to walk with him? So we're going to pray and you can just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I need you as my savior. I thank you for forgiving my sin and letting me become a new creation. We ask you to be Lord, to be our leader as we begin this journey to figure out what that means. In Jesus' name, amen. To the God.